underemployment in the country. That is when you add the unemployed, people who have to take part-time or temporary jobs, as many are and have in the uh, holiday season, 19%, according to Gallup, 19%. The unemployment rate taken as the Obama administration gives us, 9.4%. We've now had unemployment at over 9% for 20 months in a row. That's the longest period of over 9% since the Great Depression. What has all this spending gotten us? What has all this massive government and massive debt, what has it gotten us other than massive government and massive debt? It's choking liberty. It's choking opportunity. But Obama praised himself for all this miraculous work that he's done while in Hawaii, while playing golf, while on the basketball court, while on Air Force One, while doing whatever it is he does. He was at the Thomas Creek Manufacturing Plant in Maryland today. Here's what he said. Cut one, go. This was a brutal recession that we went through, the worst in our lifetimes. It left a lot of destruction in its wake. More than 8 million jobs were lost. So even though we've created 1.3 million jobs, we saved a whole lot of jobs, you still got a whole bunch of folks who are out there looking, still struggling. Let me tell you something, folks. The reason this is really the longest post-World War II recession in American history, and the worst post-World War II recession in American history, as I call it the Great Recession, is due directly and specifically to his policies and the policies of his party due to his ideology. You know, this isn't the first recession we Americans have had. There have been over half a dozen since World War II, maybe a dozen. But policies are adopted to liberate the private sector, to expand the economy, to create wealth, to make profits, and therefore, in turn, to create jobs. But he saw the recession... That started at the end of the Bush era when the Democrats were controlling Congress as well as an opportunity to impose his massive ideological agenda in the name of addressing the recession. His ideological agenda had nothing to do with the recession, nothing to do with improving our economy and everything to do with transforming our society. And millions and millions of people, if not you, your neighbors and your friends and relatives are suffering as a direct result. Socialism does not create wealth. It creates misery. It does not redistribute wealth. It redistributes poverty. Now, here's what he said today also at the Thompson Creek Manufacturing Plant in Maryland. Cut six. Go. And I want to promise everybody at Thompson Creek and across the country, we will not rest until we have fully recovered from this recession and we have reached that brighter day. He will not rest. Where have we heard that before? Well, we put our little montage back together. Cut seven, go. And we will not rest until we reach a day when not one single veteran falls into homelessness. We will not rest until uh, we are succeeding in generating the jobs that uh, this economy needs. I will not rest until businesses are investing again and businesses are hiring again. We will not rest until we build an economy that's ready for America's future. I'm not going to rest, and my administration is not going to rest uh, in our efforts to help people who are looking to find a job. My administration will not rest until every American who is able and ready and willing to work can find a job. So he won't rest. He's been an insomniac for the last two years, I guess. But he won't rest. That 11-day vacation in Hawaii, that wasn't rest. Those other vacations, no, not rest. Golf, not rest. Basketball, nope, not rest. No, he never rests, and he won't rest until he addresses this job issue. This man is a fraud. He needs to rest so the rest of us can get to work. He creates one impediment after another through regulations and uh, legislation. He creates instability and uncertainty in the private sector. He imposes all kinds of costs and diversions. To people who want to do what? Work. This man is about advancing an ideology, about imposing a certain ideological model on our society. Not about jobs or small business or the middle class or any of the rest of it. All of whom and all of which are suffering as a result of him. 
So let's be clear, because the morons in the media cannot get this right or will not get it right. We do not have 9.4% unemployment in this country. We have almost 20%. One out of every five people walking on this on the, in this country, walking around, look around, who are underemployed, who either have part-time jobs or temporary jobs, who want full-time jobs, or who are out of work or have been out of work so long, they're not even considered Americans anymore. They're not even counted. And off he goes to his next event. Pleased that he's turned the economy around. I read the other day that last year we had record bankruptcies. Record bankruptcies. Massive unemployment and underemployment. The dollar is becoming worthless. The world doesn't want it. Massive debt and massive yearly deficits. A health care system. A health care system that will make us sick or kill us, to quote Al Gore. And they want a massive Soviet-style industrial policy, a complete fraud imposed by the Environmental Protection Agency. Let's be clear. As long as this man is president, there will be high unemployment, there will be high misery, and there will be economic instability. That's the nature of his ideology. And they will keep tormenting, and they will keep abusing, and they will keep lying to get what they want. If you believe that the biggest entitlement of the history of man, government-run health care, 2,700-page statute, tens of thousands of pages of regulations, thousands and thousands of bureaucrats, manning over 150 new offices, if you believe that will save money, then you're just as sick as the people who are imposing this on us.